At Audios, our engineers have created a breakthrough in wireless loudspeakers. We developed a new way to experience sound. Audios, the future of loudspeakers. Hi, I'm Eric Young, the co-founder and CEO of Audios, and we're building the first fully wireless loudspeakers for venues and event spaces. With Audios, all you have to do is place the speakers where you want them and press the power button. The speakers automatically build their own wireless network, connect to each other, and start streaming. That means you have zero cables and zero cable replacements. A 300-person event that would take one hour to set up only takes 10 minutes with Audios. Our wireless speaker doesn't need Bluetooth, a Wi-Fi router, and has two patents granted. To learn more, go to republic.co forward slash audios. For a limited time only, anyone can invest and become a part owner. On the next Terror with a Twist of Limes, Ice Creams, in partnership with Deviant Legion, bring you an exclusive interview with one of the most beloved screen legends of our time. From E.T. to Cujo, The Howlin' and Beyond, we're bringing you an interview with D. Wallace. Be there on March 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it. Watching someone endure an abusive situation can be difficult under any circumstances, and it is not always clear how best to respond when you see the warning signs of abuse. Your instinct may be to save them from the relationship, but abuse is never that simple. There are many ways that abuse appears, and there are many reasons why people stay in an abusive situation. Understanding how power and control operates in the content of abuse and how to shift the power back to those affected by domestic violence is some of the most important ways to support survivors in your life. Hi, I'm Renee Lynn Gonzalez, and those are the words from the National Domestic Violence Hotline website. And as a way to support others, I am a survivor. And a part of that is from the support of others I received. And if you know someone who is in need of help, support them by following those words and start by giving them this info. The National Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-779-SAFE. That's 1-800-779-SAFE. Or you can visit the website and chat with a live advocate at www.thehotline.org. Thank you and God bless. Bronk. What up, TB? What do you think my next move should be? I got one word for you. Retirement. Tamp down the stress and amp up the relaxation, baby. Retirement is like winning another championship. Maybe I'll even join you. If you retire now, you're going to be walking on soft sand in a week. On a spotty network, this is what Tom heard. Tamp, Bob, Bay. And win another championship. Tampa Bay. Maybe I'll even join you. If you retire now, you're soft and weak. Go to Tampa Bay and win another championship. Like it's that easy, Gronk. Maybe it is. And my goal is to bring a championship to Tampa Bay. And Gronk's coming with me. Mom! Where are my football pants? Don't trust big decisions to just any network. Go with T-Mobile, the GOAT in 5G. And I'm not soft or weak either. T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? This is blasphemy. This is madness. This is a boot. Staring down, looking at the blood stained concrete. Hear the dead MC flying at my feet. It took a nine millimeter rhyme straight to your mind. Damn, I better split. This is my time, so I make my way up the block. Get to home base and lock that. Uh. Crack the Cavassier and grab the phone. 
I want all my troops up. Hope the soldiers when he says, yo, what's up, what's going on? Make it quick, cause I'm trying to get my Stella on. Go. Yo, girl, I'm in the These lyrical assassins tried to pull a hit, and then boom, came a noise from the other room. It was the boys in blue with the SWAT crew. They got us locked up for lyrical murder. It's one of them charges that you never heard of. It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, we're killing all your podcasts like the HIV virus. You want to battle this kid? Huh, don't even try this. Back the... Up, think again, count to ten. You wanna grab that mic just to get done in? It's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. The booth. The booth. The booth. Yeah, it's the booth. Was he African? African. African. No. He was American and he was like you. He looked just like you. He was Jewish. Just Wait, like okay. you. Jew. Okay. It's an odd crime for a Jew to yeah, kill. Yeah, pretty docile. Okay, so we have an African Jew wearing a hoodie. No, you don't. No. no, that's not what I said. Is that what you heard me say? I said he looked like you. Do you look like an African Jew? No, I look like a cop. Yeah. <sighs> he was Caucasian. All right, your boy sends the one broadcasting live from the city of Champions. You are listening to the booth. It is February twenty third, and we are rocking. We are rolling. I gotta mention my new sponsor to the show. Audios is now a sponsor of the booth from now until March thirtieth. We had Eric, actually April thirtieth. Um, we had Eric Young on this show. About a few weeks back, we're going to be talking about him, but his product, Audios, is now an official sponsor of the booth. We are holding it down here. I can't wait. We are so excited uh, for this sponsorship. It's great stuff. Um, before I get into this show tonight, I got to give a special thanks to my guest last week, Kevin Jeffries, host of the podcast, Happy Hour with Lido. Big shout out to him. He just had his new episode debut, his new episode uh, featured Shea Cotton. We all know he is a major high school basketball player. He's a, a player who, you know, tried to make it into the NBA. There's a great story behind it. He has a movie called Manchild. You want to make sure you check out Happy Hour with Lido Podcast to see that exclusive interview on YouTube. Tonight, as you guys look over to my left, you can see my first guest is here. Actually, he's my only guest tonight. This young man, we've been promoting him. For almost a month and a half right now, he released a very powerful video called Renee's Pain, um, which features his mother actually in the video. I'm like, which is uh, props to her for, you know, reenacting some of these crazy scenes. But this young man, Bruce Bills, he released this single, uh, Renee's Pain, which is pretty much written by him. And it's about him witnessing what he saw as a kid. I'm going to let you, Bruce, I'm going to, you know, it's better for people to hear it right from the horse's mouth. So we're going to talk about what you got going on, and we're going to play this video later on, but we're going to talk about this video um, and, and what it was for you. But what I want to do is I want to get into what your new thing is, is that you're you're doing is this single FYP. You've got a mixtape coming out in the next couple of weeks, and you've got this FYP challenge where you're going to be giving $300 away to um, a lucky performer or, or whatever. So Introduce yourself and let them go. Let them know what your newest, latest project is first before we get into this video. Okay, well, uh, for all the listeners out there, my name is Bruce Bills. I'm from Toledo, Ohio, and I'm an R&B singer. Uh, as he was saying, my new single that I uh, that I dropped is called FYP, which stands for For You page. You know, if if any if we have any TikTokers out there, that's <laughs> they know about the For You page. It was it was supposed to be a song just for TikTok. You know, uh, I originally made it for my older sister to dance to because she's she's a uh, TikTok famous, you know. So I wanted to uh, make something for her to vibe out to. But I mean, I threw it out there and it kind of just it caught wave, you know. So it's it's, it's called FYP. And uh, currently what I'm doing right now is, is called the FYP challenge, which is pretty much you make a video to my song playing. It could be a video of you dancing. It could be a video of you in the gym. It could be a vi like whatever it is that you love to do, you know, just have my song playing in the background, make it captivating enough to make people want to vote for you. And the best video wins $300. And I'm actually, I got the challenge going crazy right now. I have a top five uh, that 
that is going pretty crazy for the top five contestants. And I'll actually announce the winner this Friday. And it's really just about giving back, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's a really short time. So that's how you create that kind of buzz. You give it a short window and uh, Mm -hmm. it creates that buzz. And at the end of the day, somebody's going to take home that $300. Now you're a young kid and I've been listening to your music and you've been grinding hard and you've got this Mm -hmm. mixtape coming out. You want to tell people real quick about this mixtape that you got coming out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, this, uh, this mixtape. I've been working on this mixtape for about a year now. Um, it's titled Vent, which is an acronym for Vocally Expressing Naked Truths. Oh, you know, and that's so pretty much on this mixtape. Like, I'm, I'm giving my story. You know, I feel like without test, there's no testimony. And I feel like I've seen so much already, like with me being uh, the age that I am. So, you know, I want to give people my story. If you didn't know who I was, you know, by the time you finish listening to this mixtape, you'll know exactly who Bruce Bills is. Nice. I, and and I it's like got that. the singles FYP and Renee's Pain on it, so. Okay, okay. Now, who'd you work with? Did you work with multiple producers, work with one producer, or did you do this yourself? So, for this for this mixtape, I worked with two. Um, I want to give them a shout-out. One is uh, my uncle CJ Mack, and um, he's from Toledo as well. And the other one is uh, Ty Roach, and he's he's from Toledo as well. So I only work with two. You know, I I, I want to keep it close to home. Your sound is crazy. You just when I heard that Renee's pain, I was like, yo. Even though the lyrics was powerful, the the, yeah. the, the music it was was there. It was on point, and you know, you're a young kid, and to see you make that type of music out the gate, I was like, wow, this is he's coming with some lyrics. He's coming with some powerful stuff. When most kids your age are still pushing on, you know, you know what's out there right now. Yeah. So I'm like, man, you know, this is this is great stuff. So I just wanted to get it out there, stop promoting it. I hit I, I hit you up immediately. When I saw the video, yeah. I hit you up right away. And I'm like, man, I hope this kid answers back. I hope this kid answers back. And you answered back. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, good. Let's <laughs> get this going. Because I really wanted to promote this early. I wanted to get you as much as promotion as we could get um, mm-hmm. before you came on this show. And I put the video right in rotation before so people know before my show airs and goes live, we have videos that play and Renee's yeah. pain has been in there and it's been playing on rotation and it's going to stay in there with the rest of the videos because it's just it's just a powerful video. It breaks things up. It gets people thinking and stuff to that effect. So, um, well, you know, but- sometimes you need those visuals, you know, because I mean, if you listen to lyrics, I mean, it's there. But, you know, like seeing, I think actually seeing it you know, it, it actually paints the picture for people, you know? Now, I was I was hoping your mom would be here because I wanted to ask her if it was hard, but I'm going to ask you too. Was it hard, yeah. even though you guys were shooting a video, is there points when you were shooting this video and you go back and say, man, it was kind of hard to film this because you start thinking back because you're thinking about things that happened, like you said in the song, eight years old. You've right. seen someone put his hands on your mom. So for you to have that be still there in this music, for you means that it had to touch you. It had to, it had to really open back up for you. Yeah. Um. I, I'll be honest. It, in in the the moment of his shooting, no, it didn't. It didn't really have that much effect. I think after the videographer left. Um. Shout out to Phil Callahan. Um. He goes by Our Vision. He's the one who shot the video. After he left, I think that's when it kind of hit me. You know, and really? it kind of me and my mom. We kind of had it. We sat down and had to talk about it. And you know, it it was an emotional time because. You know, a lot of people don't know, but the guy, obviously my mom played her part. Um, the guy, shout out my guy, Rabbit. He's the one who played the uh, the abusive uh, boyfriend in the video. Mm-hmm. He looked just like my mom's boyfriend when I was eight years old. From I mean, from his build to him wearing the Cowboys hat. He was a Cowboys fan. You know what I'm saying? Like everything. And the little boy looked like me too. So it it was just like looking back at the video, man, you know? It, it kind of shakes me up a little bit because it, it was exactly how we filmed it is exactly how it was. You know, like even the scene of him dragging her through the kit, like that happened. Oh, okay. So you didn't just reenact. You, 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 it, it wasn't, it you wasn't, recreated. it wasn't really, it, it wasn't something that you had to write up. It was, it, it wrote it. So based wow. off of the experience. Wow. And I can see it in your face. I can see it. It's yeah. the, that, that power is, it's still there. Wow! Yeah, I can, I can see it in your face, and it, it it's not you're not. Wow, wow, wow! And I got people in the chat. Uh, Viana Marie said the video is triggering for women who've been through it. Thank you for all your strength. Not all women could react, reenact that. 
Dear Trauma to Help Others, thank you for that. She says, the kids kids never forget. And like I said, I just seen your face. So um, what I want to do here, what we'll do is we'll play this video and come back. But um, when is the release? I want you to re- let people know the release of your mixtape so we don't forget that. Because we definitely want to plug that. And again, let them know how they can get on this FYP challenge before we show this video. Let's Let's battle that out right now <laughs> bang it out <laughs> I, I want to say shout out v real quick man you know she uh she's dope i like her uh i like her song paper chase and uh, oh that's fire oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> the mixtape event it's uh it's dropping monday uh march 1st it'll be available on all platforms apple music spotify itunes google play pandora youtube it'll be out everywhere march 1st March first. I'm so also I'm uh, getting physical copies touched up as we speak, you know, and I'll uh, I'll be <clears> selling those for fifteen dollars each for you know those who actually like who really rock with me like that. Mm-hmm. So nice, nice. And you, you are you ready to hit the stage? Have you performed it all live, or is this? Oh all yeah. New to- oh okay. How long? I, you- I, I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to perform uh, FYP for the first time uh, October uh, this this past year October. Mm-hmm. Um. Cause I dropped it in September, and I got a I got an opportunity to perform it October seventeenth, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um. Right now, I don't I don't have anything lined up because you know, like due to COVID restrictions, some exactly, things are still yeah. Not, yep. Yeah, but man, as, as soon as I get the opportunity, I'm I'm out here. <laughs> Look, we trust me. Viana Marie would she would tell you in the chat that she is waiting for everything to start open back up and perform. Uh, we've mm-hmm. actually we've actually got some places. Because uh, we we perform her analytics, so we've been seeing Detroit and some of these places outside of Boston are really hitting her music hard. Um, yeah, and we can watch it by analytics as to who's watching and where they're watching. And Detroit was hitting, and we're thinking about coming out that way, coming o- over there and stuff. So we may have to swing through, and we might have to chop this up off air. <laughs> hey, <most definitely. laughs> put most that definitely. put that show together, Viana Reed, Bruce Bills. Oh, damn. Okay. Get that young <laughs> crowd. Get the young ladies in there for you. <laughs> Let <them> close. <laughs> oh, we could do something. We could work something out. But you know, we'll figure this out. So what I want you to do, real quick, I want you to kind of set this video up. I'm gonna let you introduce it, and then we're gonna play it. Okay, this song is uh, my single Renee's Pain, uh, produced by CJ Mack, um, shot by Al Vision, and it's a real story. It's my story. It's my mother's story, and. I know a lot of women out there can relate to this. And you said, you, so you have a sister, you said, before we get into this video. So your sister. I got two. Was, you have two sisters? I have two sisters. Are I have they, one younger and one older than me. I'm the middle child. So were they there when all this stuff was transpiring too? Yeah, they oh, were, they were, man. they're both of them. Ooh, man. I'm, it's great to see. Now, and and it's, it's, it's different because, you know, how it affects me. I don't know how it affects them. I only, I can speak on how it affects me. And how it affected me, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we all have our own, you know, perception of things. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, they were definitely they were both present when all of this happened. Wow! And this wow. is from like the ages of for me, it's from like the ages of eight to ten. Wow! Wow! Crazy stuff. Okay, so we're gonna get into this video, Renee's pain, and uh, this is it, people. Bruce Bills, you've been seeing it, but we're just gonna play it right now because he's on the show tonight, and then we'll be back to close out this interview. Here it is, Renee's pain on the booth. I just don't understand. What is your problem? Like for real, like, what's your problem? You I don't know, but what's your problem? You I don't going? understand what, what. Where are you going?
for you, mama. So don't ever think that I won't. All right, we're back here in the booth, and it's your boy Sinister One broadcasting live from the City of Champions. I got to thank everybody out there that's in the chat. Deanna Marie's in the chat. Hey, Bruce Bill's mom's is actually at work, but she's popping into this chat right now. Renee Lynn, what's up? We got our PSA that you guys saw just before this show aired, the PSA that she did for our National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, so props to her for doing this. And as I said, you guys just saw Renee's pain. This is the visual story from our man here, Bruce Bills, and his mother, as we said, as we just found out, they didn't just re you know, reenact, they pretty much recreated those scenes that he saw as a child. So it's not like they just said, Let's just throw this together and put whatever visual in. He these are actual instances that happened, so I give them even more props now. Um and the fact that you said you know, after it was done you had to sit down with your mom and just and just talk about it. That's that just tells me yeah. how powerful that really was, you know. And I feel like I'm like, damn, this is this is this is crazy. This is real. And sometimes the realest stuff ends up being the the, the best stuff to put in front of people as a product. So um, your mom's in here right now. I don't know if you want to say anything to her in the chat. She's in the chat right I, now. I can't. I can't really see her right now. But I do want to give a shout out to my mom. You know, I love you, mom. Um. Mm-hmm. It's crazy about this song, though, because, like, just the amount of women I've had reach out to me about this, you know, um, and them kind of give me their testimony mm-hmm. on as far as domestic violence is concerned, you know. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, when I wrote the song, I wrote it from, obviously, like, my personal experience. I didn't write it, like, thinking, like, oh, this is going to touch so many people. And honestly, I sat on the song for about a year because it was so personal and dear to my heart, and I didn't want to be judged by by the content of like the lyrical content of the song you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it just got to a point where i was like whatever man it is like this this is my story it is what it is like judge me hate me this is what it is you know Not, the song's fire the song is fire it hit home it hit I'm home crazy. and i tell you you know I, I i i love the fact when people come out and just keep it real and put it out there in front of everyone so um again let them know your social media and where they can find you, where they can listen to you and mention that mixtape one more time, man. Okay. Um, you guys can follow me on IG at BB underscore music, music with a Z. So BB underscore M U Z I C. You can follow me on Twitter at Bruce bills Four, just the number four. You can follow me on, follow my YouTube channel. Bruce is just Bruce bills and facebook bruce bills and you guys can search me up on apple music spotify it's my music is uh it's on it's everywhere and i got more projects as well out there and, and my mixtape titled vent vocally expressing naked truths it uh it drops march 1st so this upcoming monday nice i can't wait can't wait to follow this when it drops check it out um and i'm gonna be right there for you i'm not you're not gonna see me on tiktok doing any fyp though <laughs> <laughs> I'll save that. I'll save that for the younger TikTokers. Let them get that three hundred. Because this yeah. one is not going to be up here doing some FYP. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll get my boys or somebody or someone to do that. But um, we got uh, a lot of people in chat. Your mom said, "I love you more." Um, Rhonda Sanderson, what's going on? I see you in the cat chat. Uh, Kevin Jeffries is actually hitting me up right now. So let me just let him know that we are on right now. And let him know. And, um, man, it's up to you, man. If you want to hang out, I got some topics that I got to talk about. Um, if you want to hang out with on the show with me, sometimes it's nice to have people hang out. If you got nothing to do, I got I got the new Mortal Kombat trailer I've got to unveil. So it's up to you. You you can either hang out with me, go through some of these topics, and stay on here. Or you can I can let you go. It's up to you, man. I'm going to let you decide. I can, st- I can stick around for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. so Bruce Bills is going to stick around. I'm going to try to fly through this and try to get get my man to touch base on one of these topics <laughs> that we got All going right. on. What's up, Kevin Jeffries? Kevin Jeffries in the chat. Uh, happy hour with Lido. Make sure you check out his new episode with Shea Cotton. 
man child. Dan Haggerty's in the chat. So we got um, down the bottom here. Michael Douglas Barreto, MDB Electronics, is one of my sponsors. As you guys saw, Audios has now jumped on as a sponsor. Their ad play before him. MDB Electronics, everybody knows that Sinister One's a big gamer. I've always been a big gamer. When my controller has an issue or it starts to drift, I send my controller out to Michael D. Barreto. And what he does is he fixes my controllers within 24 hours and has it back to you within 24 hours. You're back to gaming. The guy is a beast. Um, and, and he knows how important it is for me to game when you got five Xboxes between you and your boys and you 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 on all the time. So I got to mention him. Got to mention my cousin Rebel Rom, her clothing line. You get a chance to check out www.rebelrom.com and hit her up. She's got some great clothing you guys need to check out. She's got a new shirt that supports artists like you, Bruce. Um, It's a shirt that's supporting the artists right now. It's a great product. Check her out. Um, Tactical Target Systems. That's one of my targets up there, the zombie targets. So when I take some time off and go down to the range, I took my boys to the range last night for the first time. Pretty excited about it. Tactical Targets. You reach out to him, Don Robertson. They've got targets for any time you want to go down the range or if you go shooting, great stuff. Let them know you heard about it on the booth. Also, as i seen, Viana Marie's in the chat. There's Viana Marie right there. You can get all of her stuff on all different social media platforms. You can buy her music on all different outlets. Uh, she is being distributed by DistroKid, which is one of the best hands-down outlets for independent artists. Uh, let's get into the news booth here. Uh, first topic in the news booth here in the local area, the Kowloon was rumored to be closing and the Kowloon owners came on and they said, nah, we're not closing. Um, our kids just don't want to take over the business, but we're still going to stay open for, for a long period of time. Well, it doesn't look like it's that long period of time because it looks like the property development could include 220 rental units and 40,000 square feet as there as, as a developer has approached, uh, the city of Saugus, uh, in regards to this property. So it did Kowloon may be going sooner than we think. Think uh, also in the news booth, rabies clinic, pet food pantry is coming up March 21st. You got to get in early register. Now it's like $15 to get your rabies shot for your dog, $15 to get a uh, shot for your cat, but you got to fill out online and reserve your spot. This fills up quick. It raises a lot of money for the rabies clinic, pet food pantry for the ASP CA. Also, I got a scam alert to let everybody know if you got this text message that you see right here in this picture um, on your phone, it is a scam. Unemployment will never text you or ask you about any of your information in regards to unemployment. A lot of people are getting this text. And the sad thing is, is you scam us all suck. And it's coming right for me because under COVID, you guys have been taking advantage of elderly people um, with the candid, uh, uh, COVID vaccinations. And now you're trying to do it with unemployment claims with those who are unemployed. Look, you guys really suck. Also in the news booth, scientists just cloned um, the first animal that was on the endangered species li- list. The blackfoot ferret. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because for all y'all who know anything about cloning and crap like that, that's the that's like the main base of almost every horror movie out there. Yeah, it's nice. You start cloning cute and cuddly ferrets, and then it turns into cloning your kid when he gets run over by a truck on the street, or you clone that girlfriend that was choked by her crazy ex-boyfriend, and you love her so much that you bring her dead body back to life and clone her, and then she ends up being that zombie that wants to eat your brain. So look, scientists, stop cloning shit. (laughs) This is how every horror movie begins they put this nice cute picture up here this ferret that they cloned i'm all happy with it good i'm fine let's leave it alone i'm pretty sure bruce bills is very familiar with jurassic park (laughs) 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 we don't need any dinosaurs we don't need any of that stuff so just leave it alone legal booth um oh actually uh, staying in the news booth, if you guys are looking at this, please say New York man was killed creating an explosive device for his gender reveal party for his daughter. He was 28 years old. Look, this is the wussification oh. of America in my book. And the wussification of America has just claimed another victim. Why? Because we don't need to do all this stuff for graduations and promposals and gender reveals and try to talk one another this poor man blew up an explosive device for a gender. Look, 
back in the day, you didn't you didn't know what you were having. It was either going to be a boy or a girl. You were just happy if it had ten fingers and ten toes. All, right. All this promposal stuff and kids graduating. Why are we why are we having graduation? Pro- okay, I will allow graduations from kindergarten to grade school. That's an accomplishment. That's big because you're going from coloring books to really learning, and I, and I'm good for that. But graduations from going from sixth grade to middle school, stop it. Stop it. And then you have a freaking graduation from going from middle school to high school. So you're going to throw a big event because your kid went to school for two freaking years. There's a graduation for everything. <laughs> Celebrate for everything. It's a way. It, look, you know who started this? Retail. Because it opened up. It's all created by retail so people can spend money because they know everybody wants to outdo everyone and celebrate whatever. There was, there's no reason to really celebrate middle school going to, 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 to high school. It's, it's, all, it's all about money at the uh-huh. end of the day. What if your kid don't graduate from the 12th grade? What if they drop out? You didn't did all these graduation parties for nothing. <laughs> well, I think sometimes things, but a lot of things just get so Americanized, though. You know oh. what I'm saying? Like, like, even like with Christmas, like, I, I think a lot of times people forget the significance even about the holiday, you know, it, it, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, you know, like, but a lot, it, it got so Americanized that like, it's all about the gifts and who can, who can buy the most expensive you know, present for your child, exactly. or your, your loved one, you know? <laughs> exactly. So look, let's stop it. We People killing themselves over gender reveal parties. Who cares? If it's going to be a boy or girl. <laughs> to me, that back in the day, that was a jinx. You were supposed to keep it quiet. Don't let nobody know. Let everybody buy gender neutral stuff for your baby shower. If you got something that was a girl and you had a boy, you took it back and exchanged it. It was not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I, I could care less. As long as I don't get a diaper genie. Because that was the worst gift <laughs> ever. It's like It's like when you get a diaper genie. It's the best gift in the world to a parent who has their first kid. You say to yourself, oh, my God, look at this little canister. I put their their diaper in here all balled up and nice and neat. And then when I take it out, I can bring it right. No. Anybody, <laughs> who, anybody who has two, three, four kids, if you bring a diaper genie to the baby shower with someone with a third or fourth kid, you know what's going to happen? You get kicked in the teeth or throat punch. The diaper genie <laughs> is the worst invention ever to men you know why because when you're a parent you don't realize this when you're a first baby your baby's all cute and all this stuff but when that baby starts to crap in that diaper and you put it in that diaper genie like my son my first son was born in june the leading into july 4th someone gave us a diaper genie we was like oh my god this is the best thing in the world put the diapers in yep a week later when you go to empty that diaper genie guess what oh <laughs> you can use it in the terrorist attack that's how bad it smells so right. anybody will tell you diaper genies is the worst gift to ever go moving on in the news booth we got the apology podium right now the apology podium is is right here right now um for those who didn't hear about this ted cruz left for cancun now actually he ain't even ted cruz to me anymore he's can cruz can Cruz is his name because he went to try to take off to Cancun while people were dying in his state of Texas. So what we're going to do here is, if you didn't know what happened, is is that he left for Texas, tried to cover it up, then he got caught coming back. After he got caught coming back, they released text messages. So he ended up having to apologize. So here we are, Ted Cruz in the apology podium courtesy of your friends here at the booth. Check it out. Well, Texas is going through horrific storms, and millions of Texans have lost power and lost heat and have been hurt. And uh, our our family was among them. We had no heat and no power. And uh, yesterday, my daughters asked if they could take a trip with some friends, and Heidi and I agreed, so I flew down with them last night. 
dropped them off here, and now I'm headed back to Texas and back to continuing to work to try to get the power on. What's happening in Texas is unacceptable, and a lot of Texans are hurting. Why the f*** are you lying? Why? Why you always lying? So the question Me? from the video on the cell phone oh. was, was whether the decision uh, to go was tone deaf. Look, okay. it, it was obviously a mistake, and in hindsight, I, did, I wouldn't have done it. Um, I was trying to be well, a dad, I, I wanna, and, I wanna, and all uh, of us have made decisions to when you've got two and, girls and, who have been cold you know, for two, two my, days my and haven't had heater power, and they're saying, hey, look, we don't have school. Why don't we go? Let's get out of here. Oh, I'm, I'm about to I, I think about there are a lot of parents that would be like, all right, let me, if I can do this, great. That's what I wanted to do. As I said, really, from... Okay. The moment I sat on the plane, I, I, I began really second-guessing okay. that decision and saying, look, I, I know why we're doing this, but but I've also got responsibilities. Also, and and uh, it, it had been my intention have, uh, have to be able like that, to work to be at all. Like, remotely, you know, like to be on the phone, like, to be on internet, on yourself, to be on like Zoom, no to be engaged. But I needed to be here, and, and, and that's why I came back. And then as it became okay. a bigger and bigger firestorm, uh, it became all the more compelling. Uh, that I needed okay, to come back good. because our priority should be uh, yeah, fixing say, this problem and making sure it doesn't happen again. And and I didn't want all the screaming and yelling uh, about this trip to distract even one moment from the real issues that I think Texans care about, which is which is keeping all of our families safe. Oh, sure. Of, co of course, I understand why people are upset. Um, Listen, we're in, in a strange time where, where Twitter's been going crazy and the media's going crazy, and there's a lot of venom and vitriol that I think is unfortunate, frankly, on both sides. I, th I think everyone ought to treat each other with respect and, and, and decency and try to understand. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. Oh man, it's your boy back here in the booth broadcasting live for the City Champions. That was Ted Cruz. The apology podium holding it down. Holding it down. Why are you lying, Ted? Why are you lying, Ted? Oh. So my, I got to thank my man Bruce Bills for being on the show with us tonight. Um, he had to get out of here, but he wanted to thank everybody for showing their support. Renee's pain is the single. Um, he wants you all to make sure to check out his FYP challenge. You have until Friday to put the FYP challenge out there on TikTok and handle that and you got a chance that you can win 300 bucks. Also, the mixtape is getting released on March 1st and the name of the mixtape is Vent, Bruce Bill. So we're going to have some of those music <clears throat> featured from that album. We're going to have it on the show, so get ready to get back in here into the news booth. If you, if you guys can see behind me, um, hold on, let me just let me just take care of this real quick here. Um, as you guys can see behind me, I've got to pay my respects. It's the last four months, um, last week of Black History Month, and I've been featuring DJs and stuff of that sort every week here. But um, we had the passing of Prince Marky D, who passed away at 42 years old. It's just, oh, man, it's just real tough. It's a real tough thing to, to take. Um and, you know, I just want to get this up here and just let you guys know, Prince Marky D, 52 years old, uh, he passed away. Um, he was battling heart conditions. Um, as you guys know, that he was one of the members of the Fat Boys, one of the best rock rap groups out there back in the day. Um, they came with their whole gimmick, which in the beginning people thought was kind of silly, but Buff, as you can see right here, Buff, the human beatbox, I got to move over so you guys can see him, um, was amazing. So I just want to give a shout out and a rest in peace to Prince Marky D, 52 years old. Like I said, he was suffering from heart issues um, and succumbed to that, and it's just, just been sad, sad. And also, prayers going out to Tiger Woods. Uh, just before we went live on this show, about three hours before, Tiger Woods rolled his vehicle over in Southern California. Um, we're hearing that his legs are messed up. Um, they actually had to use the jaws of life to get Tiger Woods out of that vehicle. The question is, is will he be able to ever play? Um, he was already battling physical issues with his back, and he had felt like last year he had felt that he was doing a little bit better 
um, coming back from those back issues, and now this. This is just crazy um, that we almost lost another legend in, in Black History Month. You know, last year it was Kobe Bryant, and this year we've almost lost Tiger Woods. So um, it is just a sad, tough story. So, again, rest in peace, Prince Marky D. Love you, man. And we'll get back in here, news booth, uh, as you guys saw. Ted Cruz heading into the legal booth. Legal booth is, first thing I want to talk about is this investor, uh, Ahmad Zubiri. Ahmad Zubiri is a polit- political investor who invested over $12 million into the Trump campaign. He is going to jail. He's going to prison for uh, 12 years. He, he actually invested $1 million in Trump's campaign. He's going to jail for 12 years because he's lied. He's created fraud. Um, he's made illegal campaign contributions. But before people start blaming and saying all this crap about Trump, no, this guy was donating money to whomever the leading person was at the head of, of, of the Democratic, whatever was going on. So whatever you were doing in presidential race, so he, he had donated to Obama. He don- he's been donating to all types of people, left and right. He had no partisanship, um, and he's going to jail. 12 years. 12 years. Um, also in the legal booth moving in is, let's see, we got the Michigan court rules that tire rotation does not include tightening lug nuts. I'm calling bullshit on this. And the reason why I'm calling bullshit on this is because I'm a mechanic. I've been a mechanic for 16 years. I was a mechanic for 23 years at the MBTA, was a superintendent there for multiple years. I'm now over at Logan Airport. I'm working there as overseeing a maintenance facility. And this ruling right here is bullshit. It's a judge who obviously doesn't know crap. Um, this is a horrible, crazy precedent to be set in the court of law. Bottom line, what happened is that someone brought their car to a mechanic. <clears throat> the mechanic forgot to tighten the lug nuts. The people went down the road. Thankfully, they didn't lose their lives, but the wheel came off the car. Um, they went to court. Court actually ruled in favor of the owners of the car. Uh, then the, the maintenance place appealed it, and then they pulled some old rule that's in the books out their asses and the judge looked it over and instead of using common sense the judge ruled in favor of the old rule and ruled in favor of these this maintenance shop and um has now said that you know that they should have won their case look it's bullshit i don't care what anybody tells you any if any mechanic agrees with this ruling here if you know any mechanic and, and they agree with this ruling here. They're not a mechanic. They don't care about you. They don't care about your car. All they care about is money. I'm letting you know that. So if you're out and about and you're talking to a, a, a someone that's a mechanic, this is bullshit. Tightening lug nuts is part of tire rotation. When they take your tires off and rotate your tires, they have to put your tires on and your lug nuts back on. And when you put the tire back on, you always have to torque the lug nuts to what the proper uh, lug nut torque is. 90 foot pounds or whatever your car is rated for, period. It is part of the same job. The reason why the courts are saying that they don't have to pay out the mechanic, they're trying to say that tire rotation, when done, and you pay for it, it does not include tightening of the lug nuts. In other words, this repair shop should have itemized every friggin' thing they did. So in other words, they should have itemized for the tire rotation, then they should have itemized for the cost of putting the lug nuts. No, you don't want to start getting into that with body shops or, or maintenance shops. You don't want to get into that. That's stupidness. There are some things that are included in the job task. And tightening lug nuts and torquing them down is part of tire rotation. This is bullshit. And I will say it and and I will fight this. So again, if you have any mechanic who agrees with this, don't take your car to them. Because they don't care about you, your safety, or your family. All they care about is the green that you're putting in their pocket. Simple as that, period. And if you're a mechanic, you got an issue with me saying that, you can come hit me up on Facebook or whatever and I'm going to tell you right to your face you're wrong, period. I don't care. Um, Prince Marky D, which I already mentioned. I got ahead because this picture was behind me again. uh, Passed away at 52. Also going to mention Viana Marie this week. Uh, She's a sponsor and backer of this show. Viana Marie did an interview with Gone Gangster Legit. 
So, oh, Gangster Gone Legit. I said that back, backwards. Gangster Gone Legit, Real Spit Show. Uh, she actually recorded her show this week. She's doing the second segment this week we're going to be recording. And I got to thank Hakeem for having us on there. It's going to be a great show. You guys are going to check it out. And I'm just going to tell you right now, there's some shit in this interview that you probably never heard before from Viana Marie. So you want to stay tuned. And Viana Marie also is on the cover of Probe Magazine, which comes out this month. Uh, of March. So you want to make sure you check that out. It's got a full story inside and she's got the cover of Probe Magazine. Also got to give big props up. She performed last week at uh, Joanna Dance, Hampton Dance's fundraiser last week for Worcester City Council District 2. So got to say what's up to that. Um, Also moving into the entertainment booth, uh, Boston Calling for 2021 has been canceled. It was canceled in 2020. And that show was moved to 2021. All those tickets from 2020 was moved to 2021. Well, guess what? 2021 Boston Cat uh, Calling has been canceled again due to COVID restrictions. Um, my opinion has been at this with COVID. I think July 4th is going to be the big holiday for everybody in 2021. And the reason why I say this is because we're going through phases of everybody being vaccinated. Um, we are now into the elderly <clears throat> Um, being vaccinated and those with uh, pre-existing conditions are getting vaccinated by April. Um, we are heading into the public in April, May, the public will start to be vaccinated. And the more and more people get vaccinated, the numbers will drop more and more and more. I'm thinking Memorial day. Mm, no, I, I'm thinking July 4th, July 4th is going to be that big holiday where they think they're going to say, let people do stuff, open stuff up. Um, again, it's it's going to be a lot of last-minute planning because anybody who has a show or something planned for July 4th, it's already been on the book. So a lot of the stuff that will happen on July 4th will be kind of spur-of-the-moment stuff unless they announce this type of thing in April and May. If they tell people in April and May that they're going to allow a lot of stuff in July, you're going to see a fast movement to book places and all this stuff. So... July is when I think this is going to happen. So we'll see. Uh, Kimmy. I got my opinion on Kimmy. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West uh, headed for divorce. Their empire is set at $2.1 billion. Um, The court breakdown is going to be crazy. The only thing that's good about this is that it's an amicable break. In other words, they're not fighting. They're not arguing over this. Um, They've agreed on this split. So there's really no question as to why this happened, whatever. It, they both agree to this. They both want to be parents to their kids. Um, they're going to split their fortunes or whatever, however way it's going to be split. And we'll see how it goes. The suck part is, is that I feel originally before I heard that this was an amicable split and that they agreed on everything, I felt like Kim was was walking away from her vows, you know, for better or for worse, sickness and in health. You know, and she's walking away because we all know that he has mental issues and he has problems. And the thing here is, is that you would want her to stay by him. But then someone made a good point and said, but what if he's not taking his meds like he's supposed to and he's refusing? She can't. After a while, you just can't force someone to take their meds and you put your kids in a bad situation. So I can understand that. So we'll see. I wish them luck. Um, I take back some of the hate I had against her because they, they are agreeing on the split. The only suck part about the family thing is, is that it wasn't even 24 hours until her sister came out and had a ring on her finger, but she's saying that it's not an engagement ring from Tristan Thompson, who plays here for the Celtics. Um, But we'll see. We'll see about that. But it's like, they all try to outdo each other in that family. Crazy stuff. Um, Rihanna almost canceled over jury. (laughs) Rihanna took a, a photo, a topless photo with a Hindu God, and I made a joke because I didn't. I saw the picture. I didn't see the Hindu god. <laughs> so I don't know why y'all went canceled because I didn't see the Hindu god. I saw the picture. I looked at it about 12 times. And not once did I see any Hindu god in that photo. And even if it was, <laughs> I, I don't see anything wrong with it. So <laughs> cancel culture. Uh, you guys saw the video before the show advertisement for audios. Eric Young was on this show. He is now in Forbes magazine. Did an article on him. Listen up, people. He was on this show, and now 
he is now in Forbes magazine. We the, this show, the booth has been responsible for uh, having a knack of knowing people before they were big. Joe Lozon, John Doomsday Howard, Nick Newell, Carmen and Camille, and the, and the list can go on. Um, we need to just put this audio challenge out there. Take your hundred dollars. You've got till April thirtieth. Put your hundred dollars and invest in audios. It's a wireless speaker system on its own independent network. It doesn't run on Bluetooth. It doesn't run on Wi-Fi. He has the patents for this. So you want to check this out. But the Forbes story is something that everybody should read. He got the idea from audios by keeping his car safe in the hood from being stolen. So you want to check out this story, read it in Forbes magazine. And like I said, support this black owned business. He's the CEO, the founder and the inventor. And we want to get this kid to shark tank. And again, thank you audience for coming on this show and becoming a sponsor and believing in the booth. Um, cause that's some stuff right there. Period. Uh, moving on entertainment booth. Let me get this ready to roll for you all. Um, we talked about the fact that Mortal Kombat was coming out the trailer and I told you I would have it. I told you it was coming out and I would have it. So here it is. Mortal Kombat, HBO max, Warner brothers, same day premieres, Restricted trailer. You may not like the language, but if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you're not. Look, you can care less. Here it is. Mortal Kombat. Boom. First learned about this seven years ago. On a mission in Brazil to capture a wanted fugitive. When we got there, it tore through our unit in seconds. The target has superhuman abilities. It had the same marking you do, Cole. It's a birthmark. What do you mean? He was born with it. It's not a birthmark, Cole. It means you've been chosen. Throughout history, different cultures all over the world <clears throat> reference a great tournament of champions. That dragon marking. I think it's an invitation to fight for something known. As Mortal Kombat. These are your champions. I'm Sonya. That's Kano. I'm Liu Kang. Thanks, Jax. Kong La. The fate of Earth is in our hands. No matter how many of my people you put in the ground, we will not fail. Kill them. Fucking beauty. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Y'all saw that, right? Y'all saw Sub Zero and Scorpion fighting. You saw Sub Zero take Scorpion's blood and make a blood icicle out of it and try to stab him with it. That's. <laughs> oh, craziness. Crazy! I can't, look. I can't wait. Godzilla versus Kong, Mortal Kombat. Oh my God! This is just craziness. Uh, moving on in the sports booth. Justin Ramos on Twitter was at a camp, and he shared a TikTok video from another person who was at a camp featuring former Patriot quarterback, Carolina Panthers quarterback, 
uh, Cam Newton. Cam Newton got into it with one of the campers uh, at the camp. And um, it was one of these things where you kind of cringed and you were kind of pissed off by it. Um, and here's, here's, here's the video of it right now. I'm going to let you guys see the video real quick. Here we go. You asked. You're a free agent. You're a free agent. You're a free agent. You're about to be poor. I'm rich. You're about to be poor. I'm rich. You're about to be poor. I'm rich. You're a free agent. I'm rich. You're a free agent. I'm rich. He's a free agent. Where's your daddy? Let me talk to your dad. Let me talk to your dad. What's your dad? You're a free agent. What's your dad? You're a free agent. You're a free agent. You ass. Talk to your dad. Where's your dad? Where's your pop? You ass. Where's your dad? Where's your dad? Cam Newton's down there promoting his time. You know, donation is, is there. And Look, Cam shouldn't have really got into it with this kid, but at the end of the day, no respect. <laughs> you know, um, no respect from this kid. And I'm kind of glad that the kid came right out, eventually apologized for trash-talking Cam on camera. The thing is, is that this kid's parents... Obviously got to him and lit him up. Um, just as my parents would have. My dad would have throat punched me. <laughs> if I did something like this. But um, it was good to see that the parents quickly acted on this. Um, he released an apology. On behalf of himself. His school. Uh, he apologized to his parents. He you know, apologized to everybody. And you know it's one of these things that have been very damaging to his career. If this kid's a great player. You know, it could have ruined his career as a, as a player. It would have been one of these things that would have blackballed him. And, you know, it could have really hurt his time uh, trying to make it in sports. Uh, moving on, Lil Wayne and other people react to Derek Lewis's vicious KO of Curtis Blades. Now, for those who didn't watch UFC this past weekend, featured about between Derek Lewis, who gives some of the funniest post-fight interviews. Oh my God! If I could just play all of them for you guys, we'd be here for the next half hour laughing our asses off. But Derek Lewis was taking on number two ranked Curtis Blades. Now, for me, the results of this fight right here, I'm going to give it to you and show it to you and walk you through it right now. Curtis Blades was ranked number two in the UFC in this division. Um, Derek Lewis was the undercard guy. He was the underdog. He wasn't the guy that was supposed to win. But to be honest, most of us who watch UFC and who've seen Derek Lewis coming up, um, Derek Lewis got hands. Derek Lewis is not called the Black Beast for nothing. Derek Lewis has had the last four or five. Look, People shouldn't have really been sleeping on Derek Lewis. So I'm just going to walk you through right here on this one here. So as you guys see, Derek Lewis is in the blue trunks. Uh, Curtis Blades is in the black. Herb Dean is the referee in this bout. He catches a boom. Right here. Boom, boom. Out. Out. Out like a light. No need of it. It's all done. And that's going to that's gonna propel him into the top ranks. Um he, you know, he comes to the ring. He doesn't look like he trains well, but he hits hard, hard. So keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on Derek Lewis in the UFC because he just KO'd the number two guy. He is going to jump in the rankings, and we will see what's going to happen here. Moving on into the Biden bombshells booth. NASA rover has landed. The Perseverance has landed on Mars. Um, Monday, it was like early Monday morning, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, I believe it, it landed. Uh, right away, they got some great visuals. Um, they were able to get some sound now from the rover, transmit it back to us. And it's, you know, the winds and things like that that are on the surface of Mars. Pictures are crystal clear. And here's the thing, people. You know, a lot of people are talking, wondering why this is in Biden bomb shows. The reason why I put this in Biden bomb shows is because you know there's a, you know, I wasn't, a, I was a critic uh, of of President Trump, and you know, one of the things that he did do that I give him props for, and I did applaud him, was the fact that he put a lot of money back into NASA. Previous presidents didn't really give an f about NASA. 
and you know, I go all the way back to the movie Armageddon. <laughs> Remember in the movie Armageddon when they're having the big powwow and they're with the president and they're the head of the DOJ and everybody and they ask him, How do we not know about this sooner? And he says, Well, you know, our budget only covers part of the sky and we have a big ass sky. That's kind of what it's been like in the past few years. Nobody's really cared about NASA. Nobody's funded the program. Every other country has been doing stuff in space and gaining the ahead of us in the space race. Actually here in America, people like um Branson, the world's richest man, Elon Musk and all these guys were doing more in space than NASA was. It was just it was just a disgrace. And Trump got in there and with his ego and loving sci fi and all this crazy stuff, Trump did put a pump a lot of money into NASA. They were able to start getting rockets. Uh, one of the things that they wanted to do was get on Mars and get ahead of all these other countries that were getting to Mars. And Trump gave them the money and the funding to do it. So I got to give props to President Trump for that because we would not be where we are right now with the NASA rover. And got to give props where you should be. Um, Kevin Jeffries is in the chat. Viana Marie says she's disappointed in Kim, and that's all she's going to say. Kevin Jeffries says Blades went to sleep. He sure did. He said he should be number two or number three now, period. Yes, he should be. I would say that. I would say he should be number two or number three right now. We're going to see. Uh, those rankings should be out by the end of the week. We'll see. Um, also, in Biden bombshells, Joe Biden approved Texas dash disaster declaration after the storm leaves six people dead. Now, this is the reason why I mentioned this in Biden bombshells, too, is because a lot of people were out there, a lot of these leftover Trump supporters, a lot of these Trump Americans, the first thing they did was, was they were like, well, where's, where's Joe Biden at? Joe Biden was there. Joe Biden answered the question on day three. Day three, when he had his, his I think it was, like, it, was a, it was like a city hall or a hall forum where he did it online. Great stuff, great stuff. And he said, I'm not going to Texas. And everybody was all up and then when he gave his reason, I agree with his reason. He said at this time, <clears throat> I'm not going to Texas because if me and Kamala go to Texas, it's going to be a waste of resources because now they have to pull from resources to protect them. He wanted them to get everything straight. And he said he would do his support by making sure that they get the funding and everything. And he did. He sent emergency generators to Texas. Um, he unveiled uh, uh, $2 million to go there for funding. Kamala Harris raised money. AOC raised money. Um, while Can Cruz and uh, I forget the um, the other representative's name, Tom um, Skyer or whatever his name is, he he took off also. But but Can Cruz took the brunt of the blast. But Joe Biden did did declare it a disaster area, and people who know from tr from you know. Katrina and stuff, when you declare something in the disaster area, people will be able to recover their funding and things from, you know, from things that they lost. So big props to Joe Biden for jumping on that. Shame on the Trump supporters and the Trump Americans for trying to say that Trump, you know, did more during. No, Biden was right there. He didn't look at partisanship. And this is exactly what Joe Biden said. You know, you can like him or not like him. But one of the things he said was we got to look past this partisanship and work together. And he was right there to provide that funding. So I am so glad that he did what he did. Um, getting ready to head out of here. These are the Sinister One beanies that you guys see here. I got to give props to all my people who have been buying the beanies. Daryl Smith, what's up, man? I got to get you props, boy. Hanging out with you. DJ Bobby Steels, the newest of the Sinister One beanies. Got to give him props. Jamie Canfield. Just got out the hospital battling COVID. Uh, it was a real close, scary situation with him. But um, he's now out of the hospital. He's recovering from COVID. Jamie, our prayers and blessings go out to you. Thank you for rocking that Sinister One Productions hat and supporting the booth. Corey the Barber. One hour before the show, I was sitting in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the seat, Corey. What's up, Eastside Cuts? Holding it down with his hat. Uh, UFC fighter Peter Barrett. What's going on, Peter? He did two pictures for the booth. Holding it down. My cousin's son, Rebel Romp Clothing. Shout out my stepson, Re Ryan Beeson. 
artist Viana Marie holding it down. She took five photos. I'm privileged. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> Travis Proddington, what's going on? Travis Proddington of Oscar Mike Radio is competing in a clean and jerk uh, weightlifting competition. So you want to check out Oscar Mike Radio. Make sure you guys follow him. Check him out and see what he's got going on. But Travis, good stuff. Oscar Mike Radio. Part of Hoobazoo. I'm real happy. Matt Cameron, host of Matty C Sports for You and Me podcast. Good stuff. He just had Chris Nyland Knuckles on from the NHL. This kid's been doing great stuff with his podcast. I am so proud of these dudes, man. I just, I just can't believe it. I'm truly blessed to be around this talent of podcasters, including I see Kevin Jeffries, host of Happy Hour with Lito. Look, Happy Hour with Lito. One week, this kid hit me up, and we had him up and going with video in one week. It was a it was a test of mine that I wanted to see if we could get it done, and we got it done. Good stuff, Kevin. You got a lot of good people that you have on your show that people should be able to see, not just audio. So, Maddie C, Sports for You and Me, Oscar Mike Radio. Maddie C's got his show coming up at 8 o'clock right after me. So you want to make sure you jump on and check out Maddie C, Sports for You and Me. As soon as you leave this network and check him out, Chris Knuckles Nyland. Good stuff. Also, coming up March 9th, Goonie Goo. March 16th, we got Ray Royale. He's going to be on here. So we're supporting these local authors. And again, Michael Douglas Barreto, Electronics. And um, I couldn't do it without you, man. This is a good show. And um, I want to thank everybody in here tuning in. And what we're going to do here, we're going to kick it off and get out of here with my sponsors, Ad Audios. For sponsoring the booth, I'm just going to play it one more time, but you will see it at the beginning of every show. And then after that, SpongeBob will take us home. So peep this ad for audios, people. Listen to what he's got to say. Here we go. At Audios, our engineers have created a breakthrough in wireless loudspeakers. We developed a new way to experience sound. Audios, the future of loudspeakers. Hi, I'm Eric Young, the co-founder and CEO of Audios, and we're building the first fully wireless loudspeakers for venues and event spaces. With Audios, all you have to do is place the speakers where you want them and press the power button. The speakers automatically build their own wireless network, connect to each other, and start streaming. That means you have zero cables and zero cable replacements. A 300-person event that would take one hour to set up only takes 10 minutes with Audios. Our wireless speaker doesn't need Bluetooth, a Wi-Fi router, and has two patents granted. To learn more, go to republic.co forward slash audios. For a limited time only, anyone can invest and become a part owner. Well, see you next Tuesday. Thank you for listening to The Booth on Hoobazoo and HatcherRadio.com. Please follow the Facebook page and subscribe to the podcast at Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. The Booth is a Sinister One production hosted by Sinister One. I've got to start hanging out with friends that are a little more intelligent and understand politics instead. It's just that I'm up on this level up here and all my friends are down here. Me, nah. You guys, nah. Maybe a little more down, down in here. Screw you guys, I'm going home. I smoke, I drink, I do my thing. These bitches hating, so you know I got to make it plain. Don't do cocaine with your chick, my main. We stick together, true forever, yeah, you know we bang. I miss those days, which was easy. If only I made it, bitch, no repeat. Now that I done upgraded, I've been upstate, and y'all think I'm playing. And I gotta hit now for these weak ass hoes who think I ain't slaying. Try me, try me, and I'll probably end up laughing, cause I never back down. I'm that chick with a clean ass whip. I don't need that shit, it's like I'm my own now. I get hurt, I get tired of fuss and fighting, guess I gotta crack down. Don't mess with me, cause on everything, I'ma have to bring the whole city W-H-O-O-B-A-Z-O-O-Gatsubazoo.com W-H-O-B-A-Z-O-O-Gatsubazoo.com Enter website, enter website, enter website, enter website.